Hello, it's John Lord here in our car park and I'm going to talk about lawns. Now, we normally don't talk about lawns because it's not a thing we really do, but people ask a lot of questions about lawns. But before we start talking about lawns, I want to look at a few plants here, just as we're here. Rosa rugosa, scabrosa. Rosa rugosa is if you need a rose that never gets diseased, and will take any amount of wind, you go for a rugosa rose. A lot of people don't like them because they don't think they're rosy enough. A lot of people don't even think they look like roses. But anyway, there's rosa rugosa. And here we have another member of the rose family. It's Grategus, Hawthorn. And that, believe it or not, was planted, I would say, in 1939. And still doing well, still going strong. It would have been cut, I moved in here in the mid 80s and this would have been cut to about this height from about 1939 and when I, I just let the thing grow. And um, there's probably another hundred or so years left in it. But the ordinary hawthorn, it's as good a decorative plant as any. And uh, let's see what else, yes. This is Vikia cracker. It's a vetch closely related to the peas that we eat, but it can, if you let that, let that into a nice border, it will run, its roots will run through it and it, it can wreck your border. It's perfect here, can't do any harm. Now, let's have a look at the lawn. Yeah, we um, planted this about two years ago. We just threw a lot of seed on it and let it grow and we cut it whenever we get a chance, maybe once every two weeks, three weeks. We cut it as high as we can. We give it no help, we do nothing. And as a result, it's a very sort of natural lawn, which seemingly is all the go now. Um, I was ahead of my time. I just did it because out of laziness, but now I seemingly am good for the wildlife and all. And we have, uh, we have our dandelions, feet and kissel, clover, Leaf. Let's see what else we have. We have peel buttercup. And we have sorrel that you can eat. They're very nice. That's you get that in posh restaurants, sorrel. That's the very same sorrel as you get in posh restaurants. Now, um, because this is here at the edge of the, of the car park and we couldn't use our parking because it was just awkward, so we put a lawn on. We're not really, we're not trying to make lawn of the year, so just cut it make it look semi-respectable and it's grand. Um, oh boy, do I, oh there's, oh look what we have here. Red clover, it's not lovely. All came in, come in uh, on its own. Um, but let's look at lawns. The I just wanna go through the theory of lawns. How do you make a lawn? What makes a lawn? What makes a lawn is the lawnmower. And what does a lawnmower do? It does put the sheep and the cattle and the goats did before. It keeps the vegetation low. As it happens, grass can adapt adopt better to vegetation being cut low than most other plants. So if I was to just, if I hadn't put any seed there, when it was finished I had just left it and when the weeds got to this height I cut the weeds and then when they got back to that height again I cut them again. In three or four years time I would have a, a total, a perfect lawn with lots of grass but never having put any seed on it because the, it's the lawn mower that makes the lawn. Now in nature Nature is never 100% one thing. So if you have grassy leaf plants, you will always get broad leaf plants mixed, as w mixed in it. To have a lawn with just grass is in fact not natural. That's why you have, you're meant to have broad leaf pl plants. But that's, not, that's what I like. But if you want a lawn with just grass, you have to spray. You have to spray uh, chemicals that will damage the broad leaves. They're called selective weed killers. You, you, the only other way, is to dig them out by hand, and that's just impossible. Um, so that's that's um, that's the theory of lawns. Now, if you have moss in your lawn, and the one of the ways to keep moss low is to cut your grass very high. The higher your grass is cut, the less the moss likes it because less light goes to the moss. The lower your grass is cut, the more moss you will get. Every time you cut and you remove your grass, you are removing nutrients, and the moss likes no low nutrients better than the grass. So a uh, lawn cut regularly really tightly and the stuff removed you'll tend to get moss. Now um, 
also you, your pH level tends to drop. In other words, the, the, the grass tends to become acidic and the moss likes that. So what you do if you have moss, the first thing I think you should do is get a mini soil test kit. Now we've been selling them for a long time and I only found, we were, we, I only found out we were selling them today, funnily enough, because our neighbour next door got one and he did a test. And last year he'd limed his lawn and it had worked very well on the moss, but the moss was starting to come back so he did a test. Because I said to him, put more lime on. And he said, no, he did a test. And he found when he did the test that, that he had enough lime. The li there's enough lime. Lime wasn't a problem, but his nitrogen levels are really, really low. So he got a bit of nitrogen and lashed it on. And he said, in a week already, the moss is starting to die. So this is a little tip. Get a soil test kit. If you're having trouble year after year with moss, get a soil test kit. It will show you exactly what is lacking and it's easily sorted. Now the problem with putting on say something like sulfate of iron that will kill moss doesn't change the conditions so the moss comes back. But if you get a soil testing kit and we sell them, what are they, we get them anywhere. Not, we're not in the, trying to sell soil, I didn't even know we had them. But if you get a soil testing kit you can save yourself an awful lot of trouble. But personally I like moss, I'm with the Japanese on moss, they have moss gardens. So I'm a bit different, but if you don't want a lawn without any moss, um, without, if you, you have to get a soil testing kit or use the various products to get rid of moss, and you will have to, who's that? And you will have to use selective chemicals to get rid of broad leaf weeds. My own feeling is in a few years time, they're gonna be banned anyway. So you might as well get to the head of the posse and just let the weeds, let, let the weeds grow in your lawn. So that's me on lawns. I don't know whether you've learned anything, but it's 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 from somebody who is not a perfectionist on lawns. If you want a lawn that's perfect, you will never get that, and you will always be like pushing the boulder uphill. So I think it's better just to relax and have your weeds on your lawn and just regard them as part of nature and join the green party and all the rest.